Communities around Japan's crippled nuclear plant are complaining about being kept in the dark. They're criticizing the operators for knowing radioactive water was leaking into the ocean and not telling them. Yukie Matsumoto is the mayor of one of the towns near the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. The communities had him visit the president of Tokyo Electric Power Company and hand over a protest letter. They're demanding executives disclose information swiftly and get workers to change their way of thinking. Making sure the nuclear plant is safe is essential for recovering from the accident. Our communities are protesting about actions that have severely undermined our trust. Tokyo Electric's president, Naomi Hirose, said he's sorry his company has repeatedly caused concern. He promised to take thorough steps to make sure it never does that again. Nearly four years after the Great East Japan earthquake, NHK has conducted a survey of the survivors in the three hardest-hit prefectures. Of the more than 700 respondents, nearly 80 percent felt that the public's focus on the disaster and the ensuing nuclear accident is fading. One survivor has dedicated himself to passing his experiences on to others in a bid to keep the memories alive. NHK World's Mitsuko Nishikawa reports. 61-year-old dairy farmer Kenichi Hasegawa is one of those affected by the nuclear crisis in the village of Itate in Fukushima Prefecture. Last month, he visited Hokkaido to share his experiences. The nuclear accident forced him to destroy all his milk cows. I was standing there in my empty cow shed, wondering what I could do how I could support my family. Dairy farmers in Itate were not allowed to ship their milk because of the nuclear fallout. They had no choice but to get rid of their cows, into which they had poured so much work and love. One tragedy was feeding off another. Had it not been for the nuclear plant? That's how this message written on the wall begins. The message was left by a colleague of Hasegawa's who committed suicide three months after the disaster. It was then that Hasegawa decided to start his speaking campaign in Japan and abroad to let people know about the dire situation in Fukushima. I thought to myself, this is absolutely unacceptable, period. I have to tell everybody about this. That's how I got started. Hasegawa is concerned that the public may be losing interest in the tragic events of four years ago and in the fact that the disasters are still casting a big shadow over people's lives. Records of the 250 speeches he has made fill his datebook. He gave 100 in the first year after the disaster, but now he gives only half as many. It's gradually fading away. The memory is slowly disappearing from the minds of the Japanese people. That's what I feel very strongly. With an evacuation order still in effect, access to the entire village remains restricted in terms of both area and time. Amid all these uncertainties, Hasegawa made the major decision this winter to tear down his cowshed. The move was prompted by the decision of his frustrated eldest son in his 30s to leave the village to start a dairy farm somewhere else. None of his family members can foresee a time when they can return home. Despite all the turmoil, Hasegawa headed off to give another speech, this time in Tokyo. What can we do in such a tainted village? There are no young people. What would the elderly do, even if they were to return? That's the reality we have to face squarely. 
Hasegawa stressed that the people of his hometown share a feeling of being trapped with no way out. I am relieved to know that there are still people in Tokyo who care about us. I hope they will help spread my words. Keeping them interested in the disaster is critical now. That's the way I see it. It's been four years, Hasegawa recalls. But at the same time, he says the villagers continue to live with frustration. He's determined to continue telling the world about the realities of Fukushima. Mitsuko Nishikawa, NHK World. Lines continue to strain themselves along the coast in a desperate need of help. Dozens have already been helped here in San Diego this year alone. Fox 5's Alina Bovian joins us now with more about what's being done to help them. Alina. Andrew, according to experts, it's a combination of both the increasing warm waters and the fact that these pups are very young and can't get the food found in deep waters. While we have seen spikes in recent years, 2015 is already off to an unusually fast start. Baby sea lions so skinny you can almost see their bones. Their skin is so loose hanging off of them, it looks like they're wearing pajamas. So these are extremely skinny pups. SeaWorld Animal Rescue has taken in more than 50 off our shores between Camp Pendleton and Mexico in the last few weeks. Most are sick and malnourished. Each are around 20 to 25 pounds, just over their birth weight. That is not normal. That's unusual in January to see that many small sea lion pups stranding. So we do have concerns if this continues at this rate, this could be a, a, a bad year for California sea lion pups. Aside from it being weaning season where mothers send their pups on their way, SeaWorld veterinarians say the rise this year is also due to the warmer than usual waters caused by a possible El Nino. We're seeing some warm water temperatures that are driving bait fish uh, to deeper waters. So the adults are finding the fish that they dive deeper. These youngsters just don't, one, they don't know how to dive deep. They don't know where the food is. Most of the pups were born last June. Their weak condition makes them susceptible to bacterial infections, including pneumonia. They're given fluid and antibiotic treatment and will spend the next two to three months in rehab before they're released back into the wild. And we're dealing with a uh, natural cycle. Also, we're seeing the sea lion population has exploded. So there are uh, possibly more animals out there that are trying to find food. But if the food is not available, we are we're likely going to see more numbers. In 2015, 1,500 animals were found stranded along California's coast. SeaWorld veterinarian Todd Schmidt predicts for another high year. Andrew, back to you. All right.